start playing ball? I know you were – is it Bamberg? Yes, sir, from were? Bamberg, South yeah. Carolina. It was a small local, town. Local guy. Yeah, I'm a yeah. country bumpkin. That's yeah. what I am. Yeah. Um, I started playing football when I was I was a young kid. Yeah, I was about nine. And then me and my mom and my sisters and brothers, we were driving by this gate at my school, and we saw some kids uh, practicing. I said, Mom, I want to play football. And that was Little League football. And, you know, I just want to play because my friends played. And, you know, basketball was my first love. <laughs> you know, I thought I was going to be an NBA star. But, you know, football was – I just played it because my friends played it. But it took over my life, you know, once I got in high school and, and started playing. Yeah. Well, but even like that, I mean, you mentioned even if you're making a half a million a year. Yeah. You started playing at nine. A lot, a lot of years on your body. Right. I mean <laughs> – But right. you don't think about it until you're old. So you got, you got, you got 10, 12, 15 years before you ever make a penny. Yes, sir. And yeah. and so what's what's like in high school and that and, and even college and after what's that workload like? When when I speak to kids, it's I want to be in the NFL and I ask, What are you mm-hmm. doing today? Mm-hmm. I mean, did you get up at four o'clock, start running this morning? What mm-hmm. what's the, what's that workout regimen kinda well, like? Well, when you're in high school, you know, I, I think it's like most high schools, you in the summer you have team workouts where you're working out, I think like, you know, uh, eight AM and then you have training camp and then uh, once the season start you have practice every day. You have workouts. But, I, I, of course, every level is different, you know. And for most kids, they don't really think about kids in South in, in Georgia or Florida. They don't think about what they're doing. You got to – nowadays, you, you, you have to, like, get personal training. You got to put in work. But kids, you know, they, they don't they don't think about that kind of stuff. Yeah, I've got a, a gentleman that works with me right now. His son is – 14 and they've got him working with a personal yeah, trainer and yeah, coach because yeah. oh, that's what he wants to do he wants to play he wants yeah. to play ball yeah, you so, it right now. so they're putting they're putting all those resources they can to him whether he makes it or not because if you don't do it yeah. the, the, the odds are way slimmer that you're going to make it so they're putting those resources out for him right now to, to yeah, try to do yeah, it yeah, of course I think it's important to provide your kid with you know every everything you can to help him you know right. uh, develop you know we didn't have that when he was young we just ran outside in the backyard. Yeah, yeah. You go outside till the sun comes. Yeah. The sun went down. Or, yeah. You know, somebody told me the other day that they'd play outside till their mom would go out in the driveway and blow the horn in the car. Yep, that's that's it. when you come back. And that's it. It's weird though because even like that, like kids now, like, I mean, like my daughter's age, mm-hmm. they never had that, so they don't miss it. Like I miss it. Yeah, yeah. Like I could remember being in fifth, sixth grade, and I'd get on my mini bike and go ride through the woods in Washington and be gone all day. Yeah. If my daughter disappeared and was gone all day, I would be in a panic. <laughs> it would freak me out. Well, you know, times have changed, man. We, we, you know, when we was young, you know, that's what we did. You know, our parents let us go out and play till it's time to come back and eat, you know, eat dinner. You know, I'm, I'm from the country. So, of course, you know, we, we had dirt roads and all that good stuff to just go out and wonder. Yeah. And, and I, I think, you know, parents back then was a little more lenient. You know, they was... You know, they was sure. they worried, but you know they weren't too scared. Right. Yeah. Well, my mother would always tell me, "You get mad at her. We're like, we're running away." She's like, "They'll bring you back when it's time to eat." <laughs> yeah. You get, when you get kidnapped, they're gonna bring you back when it's time to feed you. But uh, of yeah, course. man. I, well, I, I don't know. I just miss that stuff. We all reminisce, yeah, and you know, I, th- I think about like what we're doing. You know, it takes yeah. a village. You know, I'm just trying oh, to just trying to talk to people. You know, we moved all the time, and mm-hmm. so I would I would have to make friends. All the time. Yeah. And um, I tell a story about when I moved back to Tennessee, if I was going to uh, – I just move and, and you and I meet at school, it would be like, Mom, I'm going to go to Ricky's and play. Is that all right? She's like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I need Miss Sapp's phone number. Uh-huh. She'd call. She'd be like, Miss Sapp, this is Gloria, Michael's mother. If he acts up, you whoop his tail. And <laughs> yep. you call me, and when he gets home, I'm going to whoop yeah, his tail. Yeah. Well, so the thing was is I knew how my mother whooped tail. I didn't know how your mama did. So I'd go over there. I'd be sitting like this right here the whole time, man, because I did not. But it, but it did. It took a, it took a village. Man, I, that's – you know that's I'm I'm so glad you said that because that's what I preach. It, it takes a village to raise kids, man. It does. It really does. It really does. It does. You know the volunteering work I do, and you know I take a lot of these young men and women out. We we'll go shopping, and I'm trying to teach them stuff, and it does. And it's not that their parents aren't doing a good job. Yeah, Everybody's busy. I mean, they love their kids, obviously, mm-hmm. but it it does from school teachers to me. Teaching school is one of the most selfless jobs you can have. Yes, sir. To yes, raise sir. somebody else's children for seven hours a day. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Seven hours a day. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. And and I I tell jokes to my daughter about when I was growing up and, and going to school. But like 
she loves her teachers. Mm -hmm. Every year you could ask her, who's your favorite teacher? It's always that teacher. You know, every single year she loves going to school and loves teachers. And, and I can remember, I like, I remember my third grade teacher. I can remember my fourth grade mm -hmm. teacher. And those folks have an impact on your life. Mm -hmm. um, I was speaking at a school not too long ago and I was talking to a teacher. And she's like, I can count on both of my hands the kids I've impacted. And I was like, no, you can't. I know better than yeah. that because I spent 10 minutes with her in the library and there had to be no less than a half a dozen kids that come in asking her for advice. <laughs> Here, Miss James, I've, I've got to go. Can you read this and proofread it? Yeah. So I ended up writing a blog about don't trivialize your impact on others. Wow. Because, I mean, they do. I mean, you, yeah. no matter what it is, I, and I hope that I have the opportunity to affect some – and I know I have. Yeah, of course. You know, I've gotten you know thank you cards and stuff like that. But that's what it's all about is just helping others. Of course. I I tell you what, if, if I was a troubled kid. I, I got in trouble a lot when I, when I was young, uh, before I got in high school. You know, and it's crazy how life comes in a full circle. You know, I stayed in trouble. Uh, I got kicked out of school when I was in eighth grade. And now, you know, I'm a substitute teacher, and I just think about the hard times I gave those teachers, and they oh. were just they were just trying to help, you know. Yeah, especially with with me with substitutes. Yeah, I'd have a friend of mine that was going in high school. He's going to lay out a class, right? Yeah, His teacher come in doing a roll call. Ricky Sapp, I'd be like, here. <laughs> There'd always be one of them in the back. That's not him. That's not yeah. him. Yeah. And so, yeah. I, and I would, I would, I wouldn't budge. They'd call the principal up, and and now you're you're just interrupting class. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things when I had my daughter that I started thinking about is, do we put, put her in a private school or do we go to public schools? And the only consideration I was having to private schools, I was like, if you pay for it. I don't think they'll put up with the nonsense. Of course. I don't know if that's fact or not, but that was my thought process. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it's just not fair. It's not fair to everybody else. And I like I get it. I was a clown. I mean, I, yeah, I was. Yeah, I was all that. So you know, I now I just want to apologize to all the teachers because <laughs> man, I was I was tough, man. Yeah, I was tough, and you know, all they were trying to do was just just help. They was trying to be part of the village. Yeah. So what what changed? Man, I will tell you what. As I got older, you know, first and foremost, I, you know, I thought football was it for me. I thought, okay, well, I'm going to play football for a long time. I'm going to be the Tom Brady and play football for a long time. I stopped playing football in 2014. I had no idea what I was going to do. I was depressed, but I honestly thought that I was going to play again. I went to North Myrtle Beach High School, and I, I volunteered to coach. Well, first I spoke there, but then I volunteered to coach. And as the season was, was going along, all I was thinking was football. But I had this this gravitational pull on my heart, and I just say, man, these these doggone kids, they they doing something to me. Yeah. I told one of my best friends, I say, I love these kids, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and 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 I think that was life changing for me. And I say, you know what? I gotta help kids as much as I can. I gotta get around kids. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of that's kind of where I'm at, man. I yeah. just started speaking to them, and yeah. and and what really gets me is. And, and you've done it as well. You'll go in and you'll speak. And there'll be some kids laying down with their heads down. That's not who you're talking to. Yeah. You're talking to the kid that's doing this. Yeah. You're talking to the kid that's looking at mm -hmm. you. Um, those are who you're talking to. And, and yeah. you know, who knows? Maybe, you know, some people will tell you, like I said, I've gotten cars. But some won't. But, but you'll yeah. have an impact on, yeah, well, you on know, someone's for, life for sure. Well, you know, for me, a lot of people say, if I can just reach one. A lot of people say that. Yeah. That's not what I ask God. I say, God, I need to reach four or five. I yeah. don't care. If that kid that got his head down. Yeah. I'm gonna put energy into him and try to get his attention. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's. I, I really enjoy it. Now, I really enjoy it. Like when I, I prefer to small speak, speak to small groups. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because there's more interaction. Of People course. aren't embarrassed. Mm -hmm. But I like whenever it's over and four or five of them stay around later, yeah. and they want to walk up and talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, those are my favorites. Is because now you can talk to them one on one. And mm -hmm. and I was I was speaking at Soccer State High School, and there was a young lady that there was two of them that came up, and I had someone filming me there, so I had a professional photographer there. Mm -hmm. And the girl's like, "No, you ask. No, you ask." I'm <laughs> like, "What? Just spit it out." Yeah. I was like, "What? What do you want to be? What can I?" Have? She's like, "I want to be a photographer." I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" That's awesome. Yeah, I've got a photographer here, and you were going to let this opportunity slip through your fingers because you were nervous, shy, mm -hmm. anxiety. No, just mm -hmm. so what? I tell you, there's 320 million people. If you go ask him about photography, and he doesn't give you the time of day, you didn't want him in your life anyways. Yes, sir. Go keep mm -hmm. digging and find that other person. Sure. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the way that I put on people's opinion. Mm -hmm. 
There's, you're one in 320 million. Mm. I'll find the next one that will. I don't need 320 million yeses. Yeah, that's true. I need a few. <laughs> you know, you know, if I if I'm doing podcasts, with, you know, once a week, I need 52 a year yeses. That's all I need. I don't need 300 million. <laughs> that ain't 50, much. That ain't 52. Much. That, that should be achievable. Yeah, that ain't much. So. So that that's kind of you know where it's happened with me. You'd mentioned your mother driving by school. Mm-hmm. Um, was your father around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. My mom and dad raised me, and my uh, two sisters and a brother. And uh, I was the only one that played sports. So, what sacrifices did your parents make Man. while you were playing sports? Man, you know what? My mom and dad did everything to provide me with you know uh, everything I needed for football. You know. My mom and dad was was the parents that led by example. They they went to work every day. They didn't complain, and you know they 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 supported me when I played sports. You know, they, my, my mom and you know my daddy came to all my games. They was honest about you know, hey, I think football might be your, your sport. I don't think basketball is it. So, <laughs> they, man, they worked their behind off, and they, they 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 just led by example. Yeah, well, I didn't realize I've got friends that like play travel ball and stuff. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The time, the money, the mm-hmm. energy for that stuff that they put into their kids, it's unreal. And I, I mean, I didn't yeah. realize that stuff until you know, I started having kids of my own. Yeah, you know, one thing, and then, um, you know, my mom see this, she'd probably say, thank you, God. But, you know, she she took me out of sports when I messed up, when I uh, didn't make the grades or got in trouble. Good. She said, hey, you, you ain't going to practice today. You're not playing. So, you know, now looking back, I thank her for that. Because, yeah. yeah. I thank her for that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she knew what was in your best interest. Yeah, of course. It's funny course. how mamas know that, right? Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's funny when you're young, you'd be like, man, parents don't know what you're talking about. But now I look back like, okay. Yeah. She, she knew a little something. They, they sure do. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, What about NFL after you? First of all, how proud of you, how proud was your mom and daddy when you got drafted? I, they was proud. You know, I, <laughs> at first, I don't think they, you know, they, they quite understood how uh, far I could go. You know, um, but they was excited. You know, my, my mom, she was very, really, very really excited. She cried a lot. Sure. <laughs> and uh, my dad was very, uh, very proud. Yeah. yeah. Um, when So you played for four different teams. So I, I got drafted to the Eagles and then I uh, went to the Jets for about almost almost three years. Then I went to Houston and then I went to the Redskins, uh, but never actually played a down with them. Uh, they signed me in the off season, and then um, they released me in, uh, going into two thousand and I think fifteen. Okay, I think. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. what's what's that like? So you 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 get you moved to Philly. Mm-hmm. I mean, did you live in Philly? Yeah, and- I did. I lived right by the uh, facility. I could have walked to practice every day. <laughs> so you yeah. go through that. Yeah, yeah. And then from a small town. Yeah. yeah. Go to a big city. Yeah. And then what about when you went to? To the Jets, you moved to New York City. Yeah, I did. So every every team I played for, uh, that's why I lived there. That's why I lived there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and then in the off season, of course, I came back to South Carolina, and I I trained at Clemson. Um, so I enjoyed it. It was, it was just, you know, it, it was it was a good experience for me. Yeah. What yeah. about Clemson right now, man? Oh man, gotta, hey, gotta be proud gotta of them. Go. Well, you know, we 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 knew when Coach Sweeney got the job, we was like, man. He could do some great things because he's the same guy he is now when he was the receiver coach before he got the head coaching job. So. Yeah, it, it's it's super impressive. Yeah, and, yeah, and Super proud of those guys. Yeah. Well, and just everybody, you know, Coastal winning the national baseball championship. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Is I mean, it's yeah. fantastic. A lot of great stuff work. going on, sir. Yeah, it is. Yeah. There's a lot of great stuff going on. Yeah. I was talking to Myrtle Beach PD officer earlier today, and we were talking about even like back when there was a lot of tension between police and the public and that mm-hmm. kind of, and there was that shooting in Charleston and South Carolina band together. Yeah. They, they handled that the right way. Yeah. You know, the, the, even the church shooting, yeah. you know, it was like, we, we come together as a community, um, as tragic as that stuff is, but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm proud to have called South Carolina home for the last 20 years. Yeah, of course. Of course. I, I'm thankful to be from South Carolina. You know, I always tell yeah. people that wherever I go, Hey, I'm from, I'm from South Carolina, born and raised, baby. Yeah. Your parents still in Bamberg? They, well, they live in uh, Denmark, South Carolina, which okay. is about seven miles from Bamberg. But all my family is back there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I get back home to see as much as I can. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, the one thing I was telling somebody the other day, man, like that I miss mm-hmm. is grandma dinners oh, after man. church on Come Sunday. On, like that, that <laughs> I, I miss it. My, my grandmother's been dead. <laughs> For oh my gosh, fifteen or sixteen years yeah. now, 
I miss that so much. And but you take it for granted when it's there. Like everything. Of course. No of matter course. what it is, you take it for granted and then one day they're gone, man. Yep. And I oh I just, I miss that so bad. Yeah. You, yeah. I, I I think, you know, being in a small, small city growing up, I I think you some people kind of embrace a little bit more and take it for granted uh, because, uh, you know, when you're in a small city, all you got is family. And, you know, your grandmother is the one that uh, tend to hold the family together. It, yeah. So 100 percent. Yeah. You know, because I, I can remember and I've seen it in, in multiple families, especially like Christmases. Yeah. As soon yeah. as grandma dies. It, it, yeah. it splits up because yeah. now 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 we got different grandmas, right? And, <laughs> of course, but yeah, of course. you know that stuff. Of it's um, going back to football. Mm -hmm. um, you had a knee injury, right? I did. Yeah, I did. Was that? Did you have it when you were playing for Philly, or when did you have the knee injury? So I, I had my first knee injury actually in, um, in college in Clemson. Um, going in, actually, my junior year, the first game we played Alabama. And I banged my knee up, and I had a bursa sack. Uh, I took one game off and came back. Uh, played the whole season, kind of banged up. And then at the end of my junior year, that's when I tore my ACL. And then I came back my senior year and kind of really played on uh, kind of half healed. Uh, probably should have took a red shirt, but so I hurt my knee um, in in, uh, in college. Wow. And then I got to the NFL in Philly, and then I had the, uh, what I had micro fracture in the same knee. So I had two major. Uh, um, surgeries on my right knee. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was tough. It was tough. Now you'd mentioned when you got out of the league, not kind of needing to find your way and mm -hmm. being depressed. You know, I mean, it's 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 got to be tough, man. I mean, to be where the pinnacle, right, where everybody yeah. wants to be, and it's yeah. just now it's no more. It's just gone. I mean, how'd you get through that time? Was well, it well, I, I tell you this. I think this would be good for kids to hear. You know, when, when when I was in high school, I was I was the guy. You know, I was no one play no one player in the state, five star. You know, I, I I honestly thought that I was gonna play football for a long time and be the guy. I got injured in college and then played in the NFL. Didn't quite have the career that I wanted to have. So when I had to come out of the NFL in 2014, man, it was hard. Sure, I'll be honest with y'all. I, I was home for about a year and a half. And I didn't want to leave my house. I had no idea what I was going to do. You know, I had some opportunities that came from the NFL, uh, but it, you know, they, they didn't work out. So I had to find myself, and it was it was tough. You know, how do you go from being the guy to not being the, not being the guy? Yeah, yeah, well, but but I think that to me that's what's strange is because people from the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. You're still the guy. Yeah. I mean, we're downstairs. We got kids taking pictures. It's <laughs> Ricky from the NFL, right? And it's yeah. you're still the guy. And yeah. but you achieved it. You got there, but it wasn't it wasn't as long as you wanted it yes, to sir. be. You yeah. know, you had knee injuries, kind of kind of yeah. hindering that stuff. So yeah. I, I would think it'd be very challenging. I've, I've talked about that a lot to friends about. I call it the fall from grace, especially for like old rock stars, right? Yeah. One hit wonders, right? Yeah, they're yeah. flying around the world. They're getting everything yeah. they want. People catering to them. Mm -hmm. And now they're hanging billboards somewhere because yeah. and talking about the old days. And it's got to be extremely difficult yeah. to get through that stuff. And it's hard. I, you know, I think that goes back to what you were saying when you ask kids, you know, you want to play in the NFL. Okay. What are you doing to get there? Right. You know, um, it's tough. I had, like, I, I I literally went through depression and anxiety, and I had no idea what I was going to do. And I was telling God, like, yo, I want to play football. I don't want to – I'm not ready to do uh, what your purpose is. You know, I know that sounds selfish, but I was like, right. like football. Right. But, I've worked for this my whole life. Yeah, I was a child. Know? This is what I've worked toward. And it's, it's tough. You know, some people, they can't deal with, you know, going from having that kind of success to having to go do something else. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's it's, tough. it's it's tough. Yeah. It's scary. Like it is. Really I want to do this. Like I want to travel the country and and, mm -hmm. and speak to people and mm -hmm. and just meet new people yeah. and put their stories out and and not celebrity stuff like people that just, everybody's got a story. Of course. And of course, I could go do that for a couple years, mm -hmm. you know, before I run out of money. Mm -hmm. But there also goes the comfort. Like it's comfortable right now. And I go tell young people, yeah. go chase your dreams. Of course. Go go do that. Mm -hmm. But I I can't go chase it because 
I've got what I tell them not to have, house payments, car payments, all this other stuff and responsibilities. But it, it's scary to think about making that step in that jump, mm-hmm. um, you know, especially this late in life. You know, I'm 43 years old. You know, it's it's yeah. but so we're going to do it wise and yeah. do it on weekends, go travel weekends, try to find people and try to line up stories. But it's um, it, it's like you'd mentioned calling. Yeah. I feel like that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, well, well. well. I tell you this, you know, whatever your purpose is in life, once you start, you know, start chasing it, everything else will align itself with you. You know, the money and all that stuff. That, you know, yeah. Come, well, of course. well yeah. I tell people all the time, what's your why? Right. We of all course. talk about why's. Yeah. Your why can't be based around money. Yes, sir. You're because right. like, 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 like this, right. if I was doing this for money, mm-hmm. I'd have already quit. Yeah. I'm up till 12, one o'clock at night editing videos. There's zero money. I'm spending money. I'm, I'm burning through money to do this. Yeah. And, and so it'd be easy to quit. But if your why is because you want to have that one student that you can say, here's a video to go watch, listen mm-hmm. to Ricky's story. Mm-hmm. That's the why. And if that never changes, yeah. then I think you can keep pushing forward and moving on. It, it's not about money. It's about helping other people and, and helping kids. Um, so that that's that's my why and the reasons I want to do it. I love that. Yeah, well, and it, it comes from my wife. My wife is one of the most selfless people I've ever met. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, she got me into volunteer, not necessarily, but just helping others and, and putting others before yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever we've got an opportunity to help people out, we always – try to take that and and it's it's fulfilling i always say i get more out of it than the kids ever get awesome. there's no way they get nowhere near the enjoyment that i get out of it that's awesome yeah that's awesome yeah it's a lot of fun so how long have you been teaching so i i just started doing substitute teaching last year around maybe uh october maybe yeah so i'm i'm, I'm still fresh still fresh kind of yeah yeah so i've been enjoying it i love it what about speaking where all you've been speaking at Man, I've been, I've been, I tell you what, last year I, I started, I went to Edinburgh University, then I went to Westminster University. Before that, you know, I, I spoke at some schools in the area, you know, um, not knowing that I would want to speak and, and love to speak. But ever since last year, when I went to Edinburgh University, it just took off. And I've just been speaking at a lot of high schools, middle right. schools, uh, young kids. Um, I spoke in Colorado a couple of wow. times. Yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, just like you, uh, I want to travel the world and speak to kids. Yeah. The world, you know, not just in America. I want to go to China and speak to kids. I want to go everywhere and, and help kids. And, you know, adults too, because I, I have a message for adults too. But I, I know God put me here to work with kids and to deliver messages to them. So that's what I want to do. And I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about it. I really yeah. am. So, and we talked downstairs, but real quick, talk to folks about your, your foundation and what you're doing there. Yeah, yeah. So my, my foundation is called the Dream Big, Live Big, uh, the Ricky Sapp Foundation. And and what I do is I try to help kids. I, I do a football camp um, in my hometown where I give out free gear. I do a back-to-school project where I get uh, book bags and uh, fill them with uh, school supplies. I do um, a celebrity basketball event where I have NFL guys come in and we play against each other. And that money goes back into the school. I do a turkey drive where I um, – I find out the families that really need it. You know, I, I don't do 100 turkeys. I, you know, I find out the families that really need it, and I give out turkeys to families. I do a Christmas event where I sponsor sponsor families. Um, I also do a scholarship uh, where I give kids scholarship money. Yep. Wow. So, yeah, so, you know, just any, anything that I can do to help kids. Yeah, you know, I'm all yeah, about kids. you're doing a lot, man. Yeah. I've got a, a behind that seat right there. i got a old water jug that I'm filling up with change and that's for scholarships. That's that, incredible. That's man. what we're going to do is, is yes. fill that thing up and give it away. And that's, that's what we enjoy doing. I mean, if yeah. we get the opportunity to do that kind of stuff, yeah. I haven't figured out how I want to give it away yet, but yeah. that, that's what we're going to do is start trying to just help other kids out. You know, like I didn't, I always use the excuse that I was poor. Mm-hmm. That is the reason I didn't go to college. Honestly, it's because I sucked. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's just, yeah. I, I went to community college for a couple of days, but I used the excuse the excuse of being poor, yeah. but I didn't know how to get into school, you know, coming from somewhere with no resources. Yeah. Um, my mother didn't know, you know, so I've got, I've invited some folks on to talk about that process as well as That's for awesome. somebody that doesn't have the resources or doesn't even have the support of their parents. Mm-hmm. Um, how do they kind of, kind of get into school yeah. and what does that look like? Um, you know, I, I met a young lady, heard a story. It was a, it was a secondhand story, but of a girl that, same situation, very poor. Mm-hmm. Um, none of her family had ever been to college before. She gets a scholarship, mm-hmm. and her mother won't support her. 
because her mother's having a baby and she wants the the daughter, the older daughter going to school to help her raise this baby. Wow. wow. Why? Why? Wow. You got somebody to break the cycle. Yes. Wouldn't it be more valuable for you to raise your child and let this other child go to school mm. so she can teach the baby what it takes to do it? And I don't know what happened, and I don't know how true that story. It's just one that I heard while I was volunteering, and it was kind of just disappointing, man. Yeah, I, I, I think I think that goes back to what you were, we were talking about. You know, it, it takes a village to raise kids. It really does. And lucky for me, I had not only my parents, but I had, you know, teachers, coaches all around me in high school that, that helped me make that transition to Clemson. Then I got to Clemson, I had more people that helped me right. make the transition to the next level. Right. Yep. When you look back on life, we're, we're having this conversation earlier today with the police guys. When you look back on your life and see, like, the forks in the road, mm -hmm. was there a time in high school that one decision could have derailed your career? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Um it was definitely even in college. It was it was some decision that I, if I would have made would have changed my outcome. But you know the, the things that have happened in my life the way they did, I don't think I would have changed them. You know because it helped me grow. Yeah, but it's it's like you'd mentioned earlier with in high school coaches and teachers and mm -hmm. then college, mm -hmm. and and I talk about people's circle of influence. Mm -hmm. um, you know, growing up, it was who you surrounded yourself with. And now it's what, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. If you consume a lot of negative stuff online, 100%. you're going to be a negative person. 100%. If you consume positive stuff, you're going to be a positive person. Um, so, like, even, like, going through your, your ball career, mm -hmm. did you have mentors along the way? I mean, obviously coaches were mm -hmm. mentors, but did, did you have people that were spending extra time with you to, to, mm -hmm. to get you through? I did. I did. I, you know, I, I had, uh, of course, some close friends, close family members, you know. But once I got into that, you know, the NFL, I tried to attach myself with older guys. You know, I, I tried to follow everything they did. And, you know, for me, they was uh, my mentors. What about young guys going into the league right now? Do they have do they have people that are helping them with like yeah. managing their money and stuff like that too? Yeah, well, you know what? I'll be honest with you. They have that Ricky Symposium and they talk about all that stuff. But just like any other young kid, it goes they know in, it all. It goes <laughs> one in, out the other, one in out the other, and we're just sitting there like, okay, let's 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 help them get through this, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I think each year the NFL is is trying to figure out different ways to deliver the message because you you, you have to continue to be, get creative to try to get it. You know, for us to listen to the message. Right. Yeah. I finally went to an NFL game. I've only been to one. Oh, you know, come on, man. <laughs> now, well, I, I've been to a lot of baseball and yeah. racing and, yeah. and, and hot, finally went to a hockey game. Nice. I've never been to NBA. I want to go to NBA so yeah. bad because I think the energy would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. But we were in, we were in um, uh, Pittsburgh a couple years ago, and it, it was a preseason game. But I want to say it was the Steelers and maybe Detroit. Maybe the Lions were playing. And um, it was a lot of fun, man. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, so we go in and we buy all Steelers guards. You know, my daughter was five at the so it was three years ago. Uh, my daughter was five, mm -hmm. and, and so when she's five, and you've got kids, five was her favorite number, and then at six, six was her favorite number. Nice. And so we walk in, and she wants a jersey, and I was like, Roethlisberger is all we got. He's number seven, and so I buy her this Roethlisberger jersey. It's probably a hundred bucks. Yeah. Child word that football game has never put it on again. But we're all there. But it was a lot of fun, man. That's the awesome. game's too fast. I couldn't follow it. No, I could not follow it, man. It was just I'm watching the line of scrimmage. Yeah. You know, the play would start, and I just watched for the group of people to run to to the receiver oh, or whatever. What about college football? You've been to college football games. I have not. Oh no! We gotta get you a Clemson game, man. <laughs> well, I've got a uh, a lot of a lot of colleagues that I work with. Mm -hmm. um, I've got friends whose kids are at Clemson awesome. right now, and you know, I, I spoke at, at Hunter's mom's class. Nice. Um, nice. Uh, but yeah, I, I want to go. I want to experience all that yeah. stuff, but I just never have. You know, I, I grew up single mother, mm -hmm. and. Um, Never. I mean, she wasn't into football. I never got into football. We moved all over the place. Mm -hmm. I never lived anywhere that had a team. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got into to baseball. I never played, never played any organized sports. Got into baseball, really loved it, and, you know, loved going to those games. But um, football, I mean, I had a lot of fun. I wanted, you know, I want to go to some more. But, yeah, I've never been to a college well, game look, make either. sure the first one you go to is Clemson. Now. Then after that, you can go. Well, we're South Carolina. I need to do that Thanksgiving game, right? Yeah, that'd be a great game to go to. Just make yeah. sure you train for the right team. Right? Okay, all right. Uh, so, um, what 
whenever you're talking to kids, you know, I know you're doing some bullying stuff. What's the message that you're telling these kids? And where does the bullying, what's the bullying stories that you're telling? Where does that come from? Well, first I'll tell you the bullying story. When, when, when I was young, I was bullied when I was in about uh, first, second grade, I was bullied. And then I was also bullied at church, you know, by uh, another guy. And, you know, so my story for, for kids on that is I tell them what I lost, but also what I gained once I overcame the, uh, my bullies. Right. You know, and, you know, I, I tell them, you know, if, if, if you're going through that, speak up. But if you see it, say something. Yeah. Yeah. You say something. Yeah. That's the same message I do. Yeah. I was telling you downstairs that my books just came in today. I wrote a book called um, mm-hmm. Bully on the Bus because we used to, to bully these two girls on the school because they were twins. Mm-hmm. And we used to call them horrendous names. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't even, I couldn't even remember their names. Wow. I just remember the names that we would chant to make these girls cry. Yeah. So I had no way to find them. Yeah. I'd search on the internet, but I couldn't find anything. Mm-hmm. And um, this was in the early 90s. And it's kind of haunted me for, for decades now. Um, and a video of this young man crying about why people bully and his his mother videoing is what got me. And um, finally, I was able to find a friend of a friend who, who, well, they gave me a name, but then I search it and they, they had, they had been married. But anyways, I find them and I, I send both of them a messenger on Facebook, a message on Facebook messenger. Is this so-and-so I'm, I'm sorry, you know, that we used to do this and both of them, mm-hmm. I'm laying in the bed, eyes closed, and I hear messenger go off. Rick, I won't look at it. Yeah. Because if, if they say, I hate you, you ruined my life, I won't be able to sleep. Yeah, yeah. So the next morning I get up, at that by that time, both of them had responded, and they both said pretty much the same thing. Mm. They said, I, I don't really remember you like that. Oh, wow. And I'm sorry you had to carry it so long. Wow. That's powerful. That's, that's powerful. But like, like, like I was sharing downstairs, it's, I was raised, you protect the weak, mm-hmm. and you stand up for the weak. Mm-hmm. 25 years later, I realized I was the weak one. Mm-hmm. They were the courageous ones. Yeah. And, 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 and in that response from them, it proved again that they were the courageous ones. Mm-hmm. We made fun of them and made them cry, and, and, and they're still saying, I'm sorry you had to carry it so long. Wow. Why would you be apologizing to me? So yeah. I share that story. We just wrote a book about it. I'm super excited about that. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, yeah, and so what? What do you when you when you speak into um, like high schoolers in college? Mm-hmm. Is it, I'm sure they want to hear NFL stuff. I and mean, what are you talking about to those guys? Well, when I, when I talk to high school and uh, and college kids, it, 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 you know what? Honestly, it depends on you know what you know the the, the teachers and principals want me to speak on. But to be honest with you, I. I always ask God, you know, what do you want me to tell this group of kids? Of course, you know, college kids, high school kids are different. My message that I tell kids at the end of all my messages is that I believe that they have all the power and authority to help change this world, make a better place. Like, I, I truly believe that. And I believe that that's the message that God wants me to tell kids. Because it is. Well, you know, I my, my message to adults is, you know, we have forgotten about kids. And you can't tell them we have them because if... if, if if, if we love kids like we say we love kids, then why aren't we at these schools every day trying to protect them? You know, like you yeah. say, it takes a village to raise kids. Yeah. But are we in the village? Yeah. I, I think we left the village. Nobody's really doing anything. It's easy to act like we're in the village, yeah, it's right? it's easy to act like it. But so, you know, that, so my main message to kids all over is power and authority is in your hands. And we depending on you. Yeah. And I know they can be the, the change that we need. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And they have to be. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. It's, I, I talk to a, you know, a lot of these kids and you listen to the stories and a lot of them just need a, just a little nudge of guidance. That's it. Just a, That's just it. a little nudge That's to it. point them in the right direction or some encouragement. That's it. Like, like I, I was talking to this one young man and he was asking me about marketing mm-hmm. and um, I was like, what do you do? He's like, well, my dad and I, we own a, a cabinet shop. We make custom cabinets. Mm-hmm. He pulls out his Instagram, and I'm like, this, this is art. This yeah. is beautiful. I mean, yeah. this is what – you should have people knocking down your door to do business with you. Yeah. And then he opens up a little bit. He's like, well, we go to Austin, Texas and do stuff, and we do this. And, <laughs> but, I mean, like somebody like that, I feel like they just need a little bitty – you know, a little nudge. Or, or the, the girls I'd mentioned earlier that wanted to be a photographer. Yeah. That just – it's just somebody and, and – I suggest to, to to young people to find a mentor. Yeah, yeah. A mentor completely changed my life. Yeah, and 
it's not going to be easy. Nope. You know, again, back to the 300 million people in this country, you're going to have to try to find one, but find somebody that, that you can align yourself with that can help you achieve, that can teach you. Even like when I bought this house, mm-hmm. I asked my business partner and mentor to come look at it. and mm-hmm. I didn't need his approval. I wanted to learn his decision-making process. Mm-hmm. I wanted him to ask me questions yeah. so I could learn how he would make the decision to do it mm-hmm. as opposed to me just coming in and, oh, my God, this is all I've ever wanted. I grew up in the projects. Yeah. I finally made it, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And, um, dude, I've learned so much from him. I yeah. mean, it's – and and even though – Technically, I guess we're not business partners anymore. I saw him last week. I mean, I'm, I'm always asking questions because you need those people in your life. And, and I try to get negative influences out completely. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that's a good point. I, and, and that go back to what I said, you know, as adults, we got to try to encourage the generation of kids because right now they, they are discouraged, you know, with everything they see. But yeah. you got to understand Kids, they never listen to anything we say. Right. They watch what we do, and then they do it. Yeah. So I just think it's on us. We have to get in front of these kids and say, look, you can do this. Yeah. Let's go. We, we are dependent on you. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, I agree. You got to have mentors, but we are the mentors. We, we, we have yeah. to get in front of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I tell these, you know, when I'll go speak, and, and I'll, I'll talk to young people. I'm like, your teachers have my contact information. Yeah. I, I'll help any of you that I can. Um and and, I, and I've helped a couple that that's that's reached out to me either in class after class mm-hmm. um, to try to help. But but even that, I tell the story and I tell it often. But I'll tell it to you because you don't know it is. I had a friend of mine who grew up in the projects with me, whose daughter loves wants to be a makeup artist. Mm-hmm. I mean, big, bold, beautiful makeup. And I see a post where she asked her mama one day, "Mom, am I hideous?" So obviously somebody said something to her. Mm-hmm. And so I reach out to her mother and I said, "Pam, you know." I want to help a young person. You know, I had a mentor help me. Mm-hmm. I'm not willing to pay for anything, but I'll, I'll give her advice and help her along the way. Yeah. She's like, that'll be fantastic. I reached out to my social media lady. I say, here, will you help me do this? She says, what does she want to do? I was like, she wants to be a makeup artist. Social media lady says, oh, my God, my brother is an acquaintance with an Emmy Award winning makeup artist. I can make the connection. I'm so excited because I don't pass up opportunities like that. I call her. I, I, I message her mother back. I'm like, we, we've got this connection. We can line up. She's like, oh, my gosh, that'll be great. And I never hear from him again. Wow. Never Are heard from him. Never again. And so wow. I'm telling that story at, at Soxty High School. Yeah. And a um, young lady comes up after class and says, Michael, I want to be a, a makeup artist. Can you help me? Mm-hmm. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Market Common to the, the spa to get a massage. I'll ask them. They do makeup. I'll ask them if you can shadow, intern, whatever it is. She's like, that'd be great. So I do that, and it goes through the massage lady, the makeup lady, the manager, and I get it worked out. I get it going back through the school, and I get a Christmas card from this young lady that says something to the effect of, thank you so much for sharing. You'll never know the impact you had on my life. Awesome. I ask one person one question. Mm-hmm. That was it. And I feel like I don't deserve that kind of stuff, right? And, yeah. and even though, like I said, I've written a blog on don't trivialize the impact you have on others, yeah. is 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 I think people that 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 do it for the right reasons. Of course. You don't feel like you deserve it. You just I'm just doing what anybody would do. I'm just you know, so I love it, man. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, like I said, I I figured out my purpose a couple of years ago and now I'm just looking like wow, you know, life comes in a full circle. It does. It, it, it really it's does. crazy. It really does. But you think about playing at the pinnacle mm-hmm. to what am I gonna do next? My mm-hmm. NFL career's over. Mm-hmm. To find a, maybe your maybe your true calling, right? Oh yeah, without a doubt. It, it yeah, it it, uh, it definitely is. And like I said, I I think about it a lot of time. Like wow, you know, I was a trouble kid. Uh, you know, I was talented, played football, got kicked out of school, didn't like school. You know, I was disrespectful to teachers. And now here I am. I hated public speaking, but now here I am. I love kids. Uh, I'm a substitute teacher, and I want to speak. You know, it's funny it's, how that works, isn't it? It's funny, man. God's a funny guy. I, I was, so. I was like, like in school, you had to get up and read in front of the class or whatever. No. I'm the guy that would act like he's oh, working. Man. You know, please don't call on me. Please don't call well, on you know me. What? And another thing I didn't even say the whole time is I took speech classes. I stutter. My friends, they'll tell you they laugh at me when I when, when I would talk because I, you know, I would stutter. And here I am. You know, I'm I'm speaking. I want to speak, and I speak. How'd you get beyond the stutter? You know what? <laughs> I guess I kind of outgrew it. You know, I, I remember my mom, she used to kind of help me with it. I took speech classes, but my mom used to help me, um, you know, be calm because 
I used to get anxious and start talking real fast and start stuttering. Um, so I, I kind of outgrew it and then, you know, got, got kind of confident in, in my talking. But still to this day, you know, sometimes I, you know, I catch myself stuttering. We'll sneak up on you. <laughs> sometimes, but when I speak, it's like, hey, I, let's go. Everything's, you know. Yeah. yeah. I could remember speaking at a, at a at a ceremony at one of the schools and like I grabbed the mic off the thing and I'm walking around the stage and like this wasn't me. Yeah. This was not yeah. me. Like I was so scared to speak. Yeah. The people I can't stand to speak in front of are my peers. I, yeah. I, I don't you. know why. I feel you. But I, I can't stand I get so nervous in front of my peers. But like I could go speak to a whole school, yeah. whole yeah. student body, and it doesn't make me nervous, but or or a whole group of professionals. But when it's my peers, like my colleagues at the office, I can understand that. Yeah, you, know, you gotta stand up and talk at the Christmas party. Oh, I can't I, I couldn't I, stand it. I can understand that. Well, you you know, I get nervous regardless of adults or kids, but I, I try to take the game day approach when I play football. You know, I try to take that approach and get myself hyped up, but I can't even really watch myself when I speak. When I record, I'm like, man, I don't really want. To, I don't want to watch it. So I don't know if you're the same way. <laughs> well, so when I when I first went and spoke at a couple schools, I needed some videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I record those, and I wouldn't listen to them. That's the same way I was. Everybody hates their voice. I really hate mine, and I, I wouldn't record them. But then when I do this, I have to. I got to edit yeah, the videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it 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 doesn't bother me as much. It's getting a lot easier. Yeah. Um, but well, I watched the one. Yeah, I'm like, I couldn't tell. It's, it's sound incredible. It's great. So yeah. So, <laughs> so well, I mean, I've I've learned a lot. You know, the microphones help with that kind of stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah. it's it's been a lot of fun. I'm really really enjoying. I I, I didn't never. I mean, we met at the swim pool and they didn't even know it, right? Yeah. And, yeah but crazy. but. It, it, it's so many people I get to meet and talk to mm -hmm. with stories like the one I did the other day with the young man. I'd have never met him. Mm -hmm. I would have never had a conversation with him. Yeah. And now you get to meet meet folks and just share stories. And it's incredible. It, oh, I love it. Um, and, and like there's a there's a, a page on YouTube that I love called Yes Theory, mm -hmm. and it's these guys and they go around and kind of their 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 whole basis is. Just say yes mm -hmm. to random stuff. So like they would go find somebody. You'd be walking down the street and they say, I've got an amazing afternoon planned. Just get in the car with me. Like how yes. crazy. Oh, and they boy. would they would have <laughs> they would have this crazy stuff. Yeah. And I'm watching one of them, and I was telling you about mental health and therapy earlier. I'm watching one of them and it was beautiful. They were in Europe and they found a group of backpackers, yeah. like 25. They'd went and rented a mansion mm -hmm. on Airbnb. And they, so they find these backpackers. We got an amazing afternoon, evening, and night plan for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you anything. You just have to say yes. Yeah. So they got all these people there, and they're having this beautiful dinner. And there's, I don't know, I want to say 25 people there around a table, and they're talking, and they're going around talking to everybody. And there was a, uh, a, a I want to say a, a Muslim from Egypt and a Jewish person sitting next to each other. And they're like, this would never happen in our culture. Wow. Like, yeah. I'm crying wow. watching this thing. Wow. I'm taking some out there. Like, why does your video make me cry? <laughs> But uh, but like that kind of stuff, man. That's yeah. that's what I, I'm so envious of what they're doing mm -hmm. uh, because they're putting people together and they're 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 causing people to get out of their comfort zones. And that's actually their their motto is seek discomfort. That's oh, that's awesome. Oh man, that's it's incredible. you've got to check these guys out. Like they literally threw a, a a dart at a map in one of their things and went and they had to pull. Um, kind of just draw notes out of a bag of of what they were going to do, mm -hmm. and it was. Go meet a complete stranger and do whatever. Get on a radio, and so they they they, they there's these complete strangers and they're in a backyard with somebody playing football and having a cookout, and now they've got that story that they'll keep with them the end of the forever. But it was it's an amazing, really really unique thing that they're doing. Yeah, that's not incredible, man. Yeah, they just they actually just got Will Smith to jump out of a helicopter with them, bunch oh, jump I saw on that. I saw that a while ago. That was that what that was. Yeah, so so they <laughs> oh, were wow. they were part of that, and they called him out online on Twitter or something, wow. and. and they started working together. But these guys have a huge following, but that's what they're doing. And they're impacting, and it's all positive. You got to go jump next then. You got to go now. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we're going to, I'm going to Las Vegas next month, and, okay. and I can't I can't deal with heights, man. Like, somebody's telling me today, I've been up on the stratosphere, you know, where they do that free fall, and they're like, you got to yeah. go, no, no. You got to go do it. You know what? I, I can't swim, and I'm terrified of water. I'm this close to getting somebody to teach me how to swim, so... I, you know, so, go so we go swim together, then you will go <laughs> jump together. Now, I do want to go skydiving. Uh, I want to skydive. That's, yeah, that's, uh, <sighs> hey, why not? 
Well, I want to skydive, man. Stepping off the side of a building, that's not for me. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's not for me. Uh, yeah. I don't know about that one. I, but, maybe but, from a plane. Not from a plane, maybe. But, maybe. But, but once, but even like that, once you do it the first time and you have that experience, yeah, it gets easier. Just like speaking yes, or sir. anything else, it's, yes, sir. it's easier. I mean, like, I mean, how nervous were you the first time you ran out on the high school field mm -hmm. and then the college field, then yeah. the NFL field? Yeah. You know, I mean, the butterflies and, yeah. and, yeah. You're right. Like I couldn't imagine that. Yeah. You know, I mean, even like, I mean, how big? How many people can Clemson Stadium hold? Uh, about ninety thousand. I mean, oh, yes, hundred thousand people, and you, they're yes, all sir. screaming. And, oh, yeah. The energy, you know, the electricity yeah. in the air. What do you do? You still do anything for Clemson? Well, you know, um, right now I don't think I. You know, I, I just try to go back and you know catch some games, and um, I helped work football camp uh, one year, so. I try to stay involved as much as I can. You know, that, yeah. that, that's that's like a second home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's it's really amazing to me because um, I never had that college experience, mm -hmm. the impact that it that it brings me. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Why am I drawing a blank? Who was the kid that went to Coastal, was playing for the um, – played for Carolina. Um, now he's playing for the Redskins. What position did he play? Um yeah. Oh my God, Josh, Josh. Oh, Norman, yeah, Norman. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was just back at Coastal not too long ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah Josh Norman. Yeah. And to, to, to come back to the schools and, and mm -hmm. just that, the the heritage, the loyalty yeah. um, of their alma mater. Yeah, well, you know, when, when you're there for four years, you know, that, that, that becomes home. You meet so many different people, you know, all the professors, the, the, you know, the students, teachers, you know, all that good stuff. So it's, it's yeah. home. Yeah, your yeah. teammates, home. It's that village again, right? Yeah, it's a big, <laughs> it's a big village, man. It's a big village. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Well, man, thank you so much for doing this. It was oh, a lot of man. fun. I enjoyed having dinner and getting to know thank you. Thank you. This no. is incredible. I'm glad you're doing this, man. I really am. Thanks. And then you're out the road. So I, I this is wait, it's wait. awesome. Man. Bro, we can do this anytime. Yeah, this we can awesome. keep doing it. Yeah. And thank who you. knows, man? Maybe we can get together and, and speak sometime together Hopefully or something. It'll be, awesome. be a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you. But yeah, man. I appreciate it. Yes, sir.